I wanted to show you a little bit behind the scenes so you can see what all of this looks like when I do one of my videos. Today's video will be broken down into the following topic areas. First, I'm going to talk about my filming setup, then how I edit my videos. I'm going to talk about how I create my thumbnails and tips I have for helping your thumbnails stand out in search results. I'm also going to talk about a few editing accessories that I use. And lastly, I'm going to go over how I select music for my videos. So this is the arrangement that I do every time for one of my videos. Obviously, I don't leave this up permanently, but it is quite fast to set up. If I just pan around, you will see the typical background for most of my videos. I film most of my videos in this hall slash entryway to my bathroom. I find that this portion of my house has decently good lighting, especially when paired with a ring light, and it has a pretty clean background. So behind me here, attached to the tripod, is my script. I always write and include a script for all of my videos, just to stay on topic and keep it as concise and consolidated as possible. I know I've gotten a number of comments from people saying that I talk too fast in my videos. One of the reasons for that can be attributed to the script because I have all these words in front of me and I'm just trying to recite it as accurately as possible while still kind of maintaining a natural flow. And oftentimes I'll just copy and paste this into the YouTube description box. I'll tweak a little bit, but for those that just kind of want to get the whole gist of the video, they can skim the description box for most of the information. It goes without saying, but the description box is a great place to add any affiliate links to products you feature in your videos. I'd recommend signing up for Amazon affiliates if you have a website landing page or even a YouTube page, as you earn credit for products people purchase either through your direct link or from any other items the user buys during the following 24 hours. So yeah, this is the ring light that I have. This one I got from Amazon and it's from the brand newer. I like that the light settings are adjustable. They have a dimmer switch right here. So right now it's at the lowest setting just to not blind you, but I'm gonna turn it all the way up and you can see how much brightness that gives. And I'll show you a before and after with the ring light. This is before. I used to film my videos without a ring light, just trying to use natural light. But as you can see, once I start adding the ring light in, everything drastically improves. So the camera that I use for all of my videos is this Canon EOS 6D Mark II camera. And typically I will use this lens. This is a zoom lens also from Canon. It's the 24 by 70 millimeter. I love that it can zoom up for like the closer product shots. And especially if you want to get that bokeh or blurred out background, this zoom feature is really great for that. Another lens that I switch between using my videos is this standard lens. This is a 35 millimeter one, also from Canon. This one doesn't have a zoom feature, but it is still suitable for my videos. I also have my Rode mic on top right here. This mic also takes two AA batteries, which I thought would run out faster than it actually has. I haven't replaced it in the longest time. Initially, I was just using the in-camera mic for all of my videos, but recently, I would say the past year or so, I switched to using an external mic and that made all the difference. So for those that don't use an external mic for your videos, I would highly recommend trying one of them out. They have it for as little as $30 on Amazon. And this is a tripod that I'm using. It's from the brand MacTram and it's also from Amazon. So here's a quick comparison of the sound quality with the mic versus without a mic. So here I'm going to show a little bit of a comparison between my Canon EOS 6D Mark II camera versus the Canon G7X Mark II. So this is the aforementioned Canon G7X Mark II camera. One thing I really like about this camera is that it has a flip screen, making it great for vlogging. One downside to this camera is that it doesn't have an output for an external mic, so you're kind of just stuck with the in-house mic quality. And over here is where I edit my videos. I just imported the first portion of footage. This video was split over two memory cards because I have a bad habit of not deleting old footage off my memory cards, even though I have so many memory cards. So let's just see how the footage turned out. 
There's a whole bunch of time in the beginning where I'm just trying to adjust, get my hair right, all that. So I just edit everything still with iMovie. So here's an example of one of my scripts. I do this under the Notes app on my computer. And it's quite fast for me just to type everything out and also include the links to the products for when I do the screenshot portions. I also have another tab just for product links. I try to group it by category on my videos. For example, here's one on Peloton accessories for those related videos. Thumbnails are arguably one of the most important factors when it comes to having your video stand out in search results. Just think about this. When browsing for a video, what catches your eye first? The thumbnail or the title? Rather than being an afterthought, I suggest putting adequate attention into making your thumbnail stand out. It helps to have a common theme of thumbnails for your channel in order to have a more cohesive look. For example, four of my highest viewed videos all have one factor in common with the thumbnails. They are pieced together in a four quadrant pattern. Take a look at the first one on the top left. Although there is no text on it, it still managed to gather over 200,000 views through its combined thumbnail, title, and keyword tags. In the fitness space, I also find it helpful to put before and after results. If you have genuine results, not saying anyone would clickbait with Photoshop, but you never know these days, as these videos tend to garner more clicks as well. During the editing process, I've been using these 50 millimeter headphones that go over the ear. They're currently available on Amazon for $42.99. One thing I like about these is that they're fully collapsible, making them really easy for on the go and the ears swivel 90 degrees both ways. The earmuff portions are made of a comfortable leather memory foam material, and these headphones also include a 6.35 millimeter jack. These headphones are compatible with most smartphones, PCs, computers, and tablets. For recording all my voiceovers, I've been using this USB microphone from the brand Mano. It's currently available on Amazon for $27.99. It comes with a USB 2.0 cable, a foldable tripod, as well as a foam windscreen. The foam windscreen is used to prevent popping and improve the vocal recording quality. For a quick example, currently I'm using the foam windscreen, but I'm gonna remove it and show you the difference without it. So this is what it sounds like without the foam windscreen. As you can probably tell, there is more of a popping sound. This microphone is suitable for recording, gaming, podcasting, streaming, Skype, voiceover, YouTube, etc. Now, when it comes to selecting background music for my videos, all of the tracks I use are from the audio library under the YouTube Creator Studios. They have a ton of free music options, and generally I select music under the hip hop genre. I'm going to show you a few of my favorite tracks that you may recognize from my previous videos.